the normal as an approximation to the binomial. So imagine you have a binomial distribution like this and you want to find out the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. Now just cast your mind back to binomial distributions a little bit. For this one you would have to do the probability that x is 0 plus x is 1 plus and so on all the way up to 9. You have to find each of those separately and add them together. That's far too long. So what we can do in certain circumstances is use a normal approximation and here's why. So, if we consider the graph of this binomial distribution, it would look like this. So we've got the probability up the side and the values of uh, x down the bottom. So it could be anywhere between 0 and 20, and it will look like this. Now, the shape of this is very similar to the normal distribution. So we could use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial. So here are the conditions. If x follows the binomial distribution of n and p and np is greater than 5 and nq is greater than 5, remember q is just 1 minus p, then we can use the um, following approximation where we can approximate it to the normal distribution where the mean will be np and the um, standard deviation will be npq. Right, so then we also need to consider um, something called the continuity correction. And the reason for that is because the binomial distribution is discrete, but the normal is continuous. So they're not quite the same kind of distribution. Discrete is only dealing in whole numbers, but normal could be anything in between those whole numbers as well. So if we think about that graph again, If we were doing something like the probability that x is less than 12 as a binomial um, calculation, then this is on the binomial one. Then we would just look up the 12 there for binomial. But if we're changing this into the normal distribution, we need to think about all of the numbers that would round to the thing that we're thinking about. So anything that's less than 12 means 12 can't be included so we want to go up to all of the numbers that could round to a whole number that was less than 12 so we're looking at just before that 12 and of course that would be 11.5 anything under the 11.5 would round to what we're looking for and anything above the 11.5 would be 12 or more and not what we're looking for so on our normal approximation, we need to change that to the probability that x equals, sorry, x is less than 11.5. And that's called our continuity correction. This little bit extra that we talk about in between those whole numbers um, to fit the thing that, that uh, has been changed into a continuous distribution. So let's have a think about that with a few other values. If we were doing the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10, then changing that into a normal distribution, we want to do everything that went above 10, but any value that rounds to 10 as well. So we've got to include that. So this would be all of this area above the 10, plus that little bit just before that would also round to 10, which is of course from 9.5 upwards. And it needs to be that bit just before the 10, so it gets included in that. So this would be the probability that x is greater than 9.5. Let's do another one. So if we did the probability that x was greater than 10, that of course wouldn't include that bit just before the 10. We'd need to start just after it so that when those numbers got rounded, we would not be including the 10 because we're not doing a greater than or equal to, we're just doing greater than. Okay, here's our example. It's much easier to do in practice. Okay, so x follows a binomial distribution with um, 80 and 0.4. Remember that means 80 trials and the probability of success is 0.4. We want to use a suitable approximation to find a few things. So the first one, we're finding this probability. Now remember, if we're changing this into a normal, that's going to approximate to 32 and 19.2 and that's found by doing n times p and then n times p times q. So that would be 80 times 0.4 gives the 32, then 80 times 0.4 times 0.6 gives 19.2. So this now becomes, with our continuity correction, 
x is less than or equal to 34.5. We want everything up to 34 and it's got to include the 34 so we need to go just a little bit more. Okay, so this is now the probability that z is this, doing our transformation onto z. And then read off the table to get our final answer. Right, next one. The probability that x equals 33. Here we have an exact value. Now if we're changing that to a normal distribution, we need to think what values could be included that would get rounded to exactly 33. So that would be between 32.5 and 33.5. So it's going to look like this. Remember, always draw your diagrams to figure out what you need to do. And we'll transfer, for, transform that into the z equivalent. And then do our subtraction of those two areas, reading off the table to get our final answer. OK, and the probability that x is between these two numbers, so it's got to be greater than 30 or less than or equal to 40 transforming that into the normal distribution. So it's got to be bigger than 30 and not including it. So we've got to put 30.5 in that one. If we went to 29.5, that would include the 30 and we don't want it included. All right, now thinking about the 40, it's got to be less than or equal to 40. So we need to go up to the 40 and that little bit half on top of it to make sure we include everything that would get rounded to 40. Then transfer, transform that into Z equivalents after we've drawn our little picture, like this. We get our two numbers from there. I'm going to do the subtraction to get our final answer in just a moment. There we go. Right, we'll try apply this to a, a context question now. So a manufacturer of calculators knows that 6% of them are of the calculators produced are defective. The calculators are sold in boxes of 30 and they're shipped in crates with 100 boxes in each crate. We want the probability, so first of all, that a box contains exactly two defective calculators. So we're just talking about the 30 in the box now. And that's going to, well, we need to set out what our variable is first. So x is the number of defective calculators in a box. It's going to follow a binomial distribution with, we. Uh, 30 trials and probability of six success is 0.06 to give us the 6%. And we want the probability that x equals 2. So do your normal binomial calculation here. Hopefully you can remember it. And there's our probability. Next we are looking at a box contains at least one defective calculator. So same distribution, but this time we're looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1, which is easiest found by doing 1 minus the probability that x equals 0. So we'll carry on with that, and there's our probability. Next, a crate contains more than 80 boxes with at least one defective calculator. Now this is very typical in exam questions. You'll have to work out some probability beforehand and go and use it in another um, distribution afterwards. So now we are talking about the crates, so we're letting y be the number of boxes that contain at least one defective calculator. The probability of the box containing one at least one defective calculator we just worked out in part b. So y follows a binomial distribution with 100 boxes on the crate, and the probability that each one it contains at least one defective calculator is this 0.84 that we found in the previous part. OK, now we're just going to move that same question. We're just going to move what we just did up a little so we can have a bit more room. So we now want to find the probability that y is greater than 80, that there's more, of the, more than 80 of these boxes with at least one defective calculator. So y follows a normal distribution. Uh, we just did that transformation with NP and NPQ. And this is going to be translated into 80.5 because we don't want that 80 included. So we need to go to above 80.5. Looks like this. So now we're going to transform that into the Z curve. Which of course use the symmetry of the curve to find phi of 1.075. And there's our answer.